All right, well, let's get another question here, Jim. This one was sent via the Cult of Cornet Facebook group by Daryl Woodruff. I still want to get a better understanding on why wrestlers and wrestling companies are so hell-bent on rewriting their history. WWE in particular, but it seems that everyone does it. It seems like 95% of the white lies they come up with won't result in making more money. So wrestling companies rewriting their own history. Okay, well, it, it would have been a nice touch if you had provided a couple of for instances, as Ain't Lowly used to say. Uh, so, th I mean, there's rewriting history like Vince does on a wholesale basis where he just takes, you know, the goddamn, uh, the entire history of wrestling and, and curtails it to or to Madison details Square Garden. it to his own good, to Madison Square Garden, whatever. Yeah. And then there's other times where, I mean, even the territories would rewrite history as far as, no, Ron Bass didn't really win the fucking Southern title from Robert Fuller in Bluefield, West Virginia. Robert just bailed to go back to Knoxville or whatever the case. And But there's a tendency to try to, most of the time, when you're rewriting history or glossing over something, it's because it either it stunk, it didn't work, you don't want to remind people of something you know the when austin walked out that time and they buried him people still remember that but it's not in a lot of the official documentaries of the time where they had everybody from vince to jim ross come out and call him a coward because that didn't benefit long term we'd like to rewrite that segment of history i'm sure you know if, if the modern era hadn't come along with video and now the internet and YouTube where things can't be buried and it, it they've had to capitalize on shit that has become notorious. You would have never seen the debut of the Shockmaster again. You probably would have never seen the Brawl for All recapped in any meaningful way. So sometimes they 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 try to have the talking heads rewrite the history that they don't really have the video to illustrate, such as Vince McMahon made wrestling big in 1984 when it'd been in high school gyms in front of 300 smoky people or whatever the story is. You know, I remember years ago they did a McMahon DVD. Now I heard that. I heard that. I may lose you in a second because... Well, you know what? We may oh. lose you because I think that the chickens are coming home to roost and oh, all no, the, no, no. the bad karma that you've got is built up into a fucking... <laughs> thunderstorm above your head pal i've got nothing but good karma but either way karma doesn't infect you uh, infect you affect you until the next life what i was going to ask you was uh, or to mention to you was the mcmahon dvd they had shane mcmahon on there talking about black saturday and his version of events was <laughs> see vince doesn't like it <laughs> Vince doesn't like it when you talk about his kids. Well, his version of events was we were getting really high ratings on TBS, but okay. Ted Turner wanted to buy us, so we had to find a way out of there. Not the ratings nosedive. Not fans did not like it. Other wrestling shows came on that same channel and did better than them. Well, but and you've got to remember also, and the same thing goes for Stephanie. How old would Shane have been? That was 40 years ago next, what, April, May, whatever it was. Um... How old would Shane have been? He would have been like, what, 12? I'm sure that's probably what his dad told him. It's like, you know, Stephanie, with some of the things that she has said, it's, yes, there's an element of, uh, you know, I guess maybe sometimes now they know the difference, but they're still giving the party line. They're sticking to the story they've told. They're trying for consistency. But does anybody think that, when Shane and Stephanie were 14, 15 years old, each hanging around the locker room at Madison Square Garden, which was probably the only place they ever really went to the matches, because Vince didn't even go on the road full time or TV tapings. Um, did, did the boys come in and say, hey, guess what's going on down in Georgia? And boy, we're getting our ass kicked in the ratings on that new TBS slot or anything. No, they didn't. It's the boss's kids. You're not going to tell them anything's wrong. Right? I would assume so. You never know. What are your thoughts? So how did the, so then how did that what kind of education did they get? Did they get <laughs> the education of what was really going on, or did they hear what 
Vince and all of Vince's friends were spinning it as and believe that is gospel because why would they not? Which is why that Stephanie was not really suited by any other reason than, you know, nepotism to be the head of creative when she had never been involved in wrestling to any extent past interning at the studio like as Shane did. They interned and they kibitzed and I'm not knocking either one of them. That's what they were told to do and asked to do. But as far as having any kind of background in the overall wrestling business or even in, in the weeds, as they say, or in the dirty details of their dad's business, no, they didn't because nobody was going to tell them that shit. What are your thoughts on still using the fake numbers for live events, whether it's WrestleMania three, which is, you know, close to 40 years ago, or just current events still using fabricated numbers? Well, I mean, we've kind of come to expect it now, right? That everybody knows that whatever they announce is, and I'd still don't even know the formula. Is it everybody that bought a ticket plus all the comps, plus all the employees that are in the building, plus all the parking attendants, plus the crew members, plus the wrestlers or and then are they guesstimating? Because Uncle Dave can't even figure it out. You know, he'll delve into paperwork and try to fucking crunch some numbers. And I don't even think there's a consistent uh, formula that they have for doing that. But they will, you know, they will exaggerate consistently and sometimes pretty substantially just to set a record or make a statement. I was actually, and one more thing I'll say. Yeah. I was confused about that because when they became a publicly traded company, then isn't that like giving out fake financial information? But apparently, as long as they give the real gate numbers or the real rights fees or whatever, the number of spectators falls into the entertainment category and is the entertainment version of the the statement. So it's a hundred thousand people at WrestleMania for entertainment purposes when they only sold 79,000 tickets or whatever the fuck. I saw the trial. Hulk Hogan has a 10-inch penis, but Terry Bollea doesn't. Yes. And one testicle. Terry's missing one testicle, but Hogan has still has a full set. 